And for more on the developments in Turkey, I'm joined now by Joshua Walker. He's a transatlantic fellow with the German Marshall Fund, a nonpartisan think tank in Washington, D.C. Welcome to the broadcast, Joshua. Thanks for having me. We don't have a response yet from Turkey's government on the TAK's claims that they're behind this attack. What have you made of their claims that they are responsible, and do you believe them? First of all, I don't know what to make of the situation. Whatever, whatever three-letter uh, word you want to call it, the PKK, YPG, or the TAK, clearly there, there's, a, there's a pattern developing here, which is that there's a fracture within the Kurdish movement itself. And the question is, whoever takes responsibility, are they ultimately the ones that are responsible? I think the Turkish government will probably be skeptical about this. They've already made a decision on who did these attacks. The president and the prime minister have said the YPG, the PKK, are directly responsible. They're holding them responsible. Is the TAK a part of that. We're not quite sure. I've never heard of this organization before. But then again, in Turkey and also in Syria, things are changing so quickly right now. We'll have to wait and see what this leads to. They're threatening more attacks now. Should tourists stay out of the country? Last month, there was a terrorist attack in the heart of tourism right in Istanbul. A couple months before that, there was an attack in Ankara. I still feel that Turkey is a safe place to visit as a tourist. Most of the spots you go to, the place that was attacked in Ankara is a place that not many tourists would have visited. Uh, but of course, there's always threats. And I think the, it, the spillover from Syria cannot be underestimated. But I still think, as someone who visits Turkey frequently, that it's still a safe place to go for tourism. Okay, so Turkey is blaming the Syrian Kurdish fighter for the attack, but the YPG, a Syrian Kurdish group supported by the U.S. in the fight against ISIL, is rejecting any involvement. How does this complicate the situation in the fight against ISIL? This is what makes it so difficult. Right in the middle of the U.S. working very closely with the Kurdish troops on the ground and kind of the boots on the ground, we've got this situation, one of America's closest allies, a NATO ally, that is basically coming out and saying, you have to pick, you're either with us or you're against us. This is going to complicate the situation as if we needed any more complicating factors uh, in the Syria crisis with Turkey and Russia going at each other, with Assad and the Iranians and the Russians backing one side. This just only makes it more complicated. Do you believe the U.S. will adhere to these demands and, and other people supporting the YPG in the fight against ISIL? I think Washington has to be very careful right here. It is very clear the PKK is a terrorist organization that the United States has designated as such. If it is proven that the YPG was directly related and they are related with the PKK, then Washington has no choice but to back its rhetoric in terms of sympathy and support with Turkey up with action. And I think the Turkish government is going to hold Washington's feet to the fire on that. How we move forward here will basically determine the future of U.S.-Turkish relationships and by determination in the Middle East as a whole. In your estimation, how does the U.S. back the PYD in the fight against ISIL, arming them, but yet the PYD is associated with the PKK, which is deemed a terrorist organization by the United States? This is the crux of Washington's problem. In other words, we can't win this war against ISIS without uh, the YPG, it seems, without Kurdish forces on the ground, both from the Peshmerga and other groups. And Turkey has been saying for a while now, not just after this attack, that they are terrorists that are targeting Ankara. We have to be able to balance our allies in Turkey and also our allies on the Kurdish front. And the question is, which groups do we support? Is there any group that we can support that will be able to kind of square that circle for us? And I think that's we, we haven't found an answer yet. So is this similar to what has been going on uh, with uh, the Islamic State and the al-Nusra Front it's and al-Qaeda? It, it's not all that different. Anytime you have a terrorist organization, there are one person's freedom fighter, there's another person's terrorist. And the problem here is there is no Kurdish nation, so to speak. There's the KRG, the Kurdistan Regional Government of Iraq. But in Syria, there's never been a national Kurdish movement. And so therefore, the fluidity that we see between Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and even Iran at some points, uh, it, it, it's difficult to be able to kind of pin the blame or to be able to have a state actor. These are non-state actors, just like al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, and ISIS at different points of time. They're all terrorist organizations. The question is, on whose side are they given any type of fighting? And given that the US and its Western allies have not put boots on the ground, who are we going to work with, that's a complicating factor. Turkey has said they want to go in to go after these groups, but they're not going to do it without American support. Turkey's really in a volatile situation. It's got ISIL on one side, uh, the Kurdish fighters on the other. How is it balancing all this, and how will it uh, respond going forward? And that's why it's not just Turkey's responsibility. This is the international community that needs to come together on this. Turkey's been fighting against the PKK for over three decades now. And when you see terrorist attacks like this, that if they are linked back to the PKK, it reopens a whole period of civil war that goes uh, back. This is not a Turkish versus Kurdish fight. This is a PKK versus Turkish state fight that we have to be very careful from the United States as we wade into these very difficult situations, trying to figure out how to bring stability and calm as we negotiate with the Russians and other groups in the region. 
Alrighty, Joshua Walker with the German Marshall Fund. We certainly appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Thank you.